Engine 4, I actually have a complete video going over the whole process of taking character from inside Mixamo and bringing it onto Unreal Engine 4, setting up the walking animation and all of that good stuff. Now that's just using one of the pre-made Mixamo characters. What I'm going to be doing in today's video, however, is going to be showing you how to import a character as an FBX file. Doesn't matter where you've got it, it might be one for a project of yours, might be one you got on the internet, it's entirely up to you, but I'm going to be showing you how to import it, how to rig it, animate it, and then download it ready to put into the engine. So, if you want to see that video I mentioned just a moment ago, the link is in the description, just go ahead and click that, it's a good 30 minute video and it will cover everything you need. So without further ado, let's get started. So head over to your store, providing you've got an account already, and then from here you can see we've got the little upload button. We don't want to use one of their characters, we don't want to use any of their animations for now, just hit upload and this is going to allow you to upload our character. So inside of here what it's asking you to do is to simply just drag and drop your character file onto there and that's going to import it or alternatively you can just press select character file and just choose it from your desktop or wherever it is. And at the bottom here it also shows you the file format that it accepts and that's FBX, OBJ, BVH and zip files. And there's also some links here on how to prepare your model for Mixamo to make it as straightforward and as simple as possible. Now I've got this one character over here, so all I'm going to do is click, drag and drop, give it a couple of seconds to upload, and then once it's done that it's going to show us a little preview of our character. So just give it a couple of seconds to just load this up, and you can see we've now got our preview. So what we need to do before we go any further with this character is we actually need to rotate this and make sure it's imported properly. The reason why I'm rotating around this is just to make sure there's no distorted polygons or any of that stuff. It looks pretty clean to me, it doesn't have the material on it, but that's really nothing to worry about, so I'm just going to leave it at that. You can flip it all different ways, so you've got side, you know, just going around um, on the X axis, the Y axis and the Z. But for now I'm going to leave it at that and I'm just going to press next. And what this is going to take us to now is the auto rigger bit. Now we do have to put a couple of markers on there just so it knows where everything is. But it's not going to be, you know, creating loads and loads of bones and linking them all up together like you would in a third party, third party modeling package. Instead it's just a matter of dragging on the, uh, the chin, the wrist, the elbows, the knees and the groin. So having said that, let's get start dropping these markers on here. So the first one's really simple, it's just the chin. So you click, drag, and then drop it onto the chin. And notice, in the top right hand corner, you can see we've got this little preview window, and this is just a little bit more zoomed in so it allows you to be a bit more precise. So I'm going to drop this on the chin, just like that. And now the next ones I'm going to do are wrists, and because there's two of those, you'll note it's currently using symmetry, so when I place it on one wrist, it's going to do it on the same thing for the other one. If you don't have that, so if you don't have a symmetrical character, just turn off the little use symmetry button on the bottom there, and then you can move them freely one after another just like that. But for now, for most characters, just check use symmetry, and then just go ahead and drag them onto your wrists just like that. So, next up is our elbows, so I'm just going to drag those in as well, once again using symmetries, we have two of those. For the knees, do the same thing. And then lastly, the last one is going to be your groin, um, just put that between the legs where your bits and bobs are going to be. Now, this character has quite a long t-shirt, or like a shirt, so it's a bit hard to see it, so you want to sort of guesstimate exactly where it is. So for me, I think that's going to be about up here. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to move on and press next. What it's going to do now is going to, it's going to use its little algorithm to generate that skeleton that we can use inside of our game engines. Now, bear in mind, this is quite a complex progress uh, process, so it may take a little bit of time to do this. As you can see here on the top right, so it says our instant algorithm takes it up to two minutes. So if it does take a little while, it's really nothing to worry about, but generally you'll find it's gonna be completed in maybe about 30, 45 seconds, depending on the complexity of your character model that you've got, and also the, ske the skeleton style that you've chosen but the default one is going to be relatively quick. So what I'm going to do, because this is taking a little while, I'm going to pause the video for a second and we'll jump back in to when this is finished. Okay, so you can see now that my character has suddenly sprung to life. We'll get this little preview here and you can see that our character is moving their head left, right and all of that good stuff. The arms are moving and that's all good. 
purpose of this little window is just for you guys to know 100% that the rigging process has been completed and it all works. And once again, you want to check to make sure there's no distorted polygons or anything like that. So for me, I think this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is press next and then from here, we can proceed to animate it. You can either view it in your assets if you wanted to, but I want to get straight to the animation process. So I'm going to go ahead and hit animate. From here, you're going to get the little preview window on the right here, and it's currently not going to be moving because we haven't applied any animations to it. Now, there's two ways we can actually add some animations to this character. We can either go to the animations panel, and we can go through these, and we can add them one by one. However, this is going to take quite a little bit of time, so instead, what I will do is I'm going to go to the featured panel and I actually have access to a whole bunch of different animation packs. So these are going to be depending on the type of game that you're creating. So for example, I've got a Zelda character right now, so you might want to use something like the Sword and Shield pack. Um, whereas if you've got a shooter game, you might want to use the Pro Rifle pack. If you're animating a zombie, you might want to use the Zombie pack and so on and so forth. For the purpose of this video, just downloading all the assets and animating it, I'm just going to go ahead and work with the Pro Sword and Shield pack. Once I've done that, as soon as I click it, you can see my character pops to life again and you can see him moving around another little viewport here just going through all of our animations. Now if you wanted to, you could proceed to go and straight to add it to my assets and that will get it ready to download for you. If you wanted to, you could customise the pack by pressing the little button there and then from there you have a whole bunch of different options. From here you've got the options for overdrive to change the speed of the animation, You've got the character arm space, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just how much space you give the character's arm. So if you've got quite thick arms, you might want to turn this up just to give a bit more space. And then you've got your trim if you just wanted to trim down the animation, get rid of any bits that you don't want to. Then you've got your mirror, which is pretty much just going to mirror it. So it's going to swap the positions of the arms, the legs. It's just going to mirror it, essentially. And the last one is in place. So if you click this, it's just going to make your character walk in place or move in place as opposed to going through with the animations. Now, this is something you might want to do if you're importing it into Unreal Engine 4 and all of your movements actually going to be handled in code. So instead, you just get it into an in place. It's entirely up to you. Um, if you guys are using Mixamo, generally you'll know sort of how your animations need to be set up. But without further ado, let's get into here and add it to my assets and show you how to download it. So press add to my assets and this is going to download, well not download, but add every single one of these animations along with the character into your assets folder. This assets folder is brilliant because even if you close Mixamo, open it up again, that character is going to be there, the animations are going to be there, and it's all going to be ready for you to download at any time that you like. So what I'm going to do now then, now that we've added to the assets and you saw all the little pop-up messages come up, I'm just going to go ahead and press view and download, and this is just going to take you to your animations folder. Inside of here, if you go ahead and check this, you can hit Q download, but just make sure you've got all of your animations on the right hand side here, and you've made any changes that you want to to them. So for now, just hit Q download, and then from here, it's going to ask you a couple of questions. Format is just your file format, so you've got FBX inside of here, which is pretty much for any engine, FBX for Unity, because they're special like that, and a couple of other ones you're probably not going to use, um, but generally just leave it as just a normal FBX. Frames per second, 30 is going to be okay. If you're a bit of an animation freak, you might want to have 60. Um, T-Pose is just going to be up with his arms up, just normal, personally. I would just leave it at the T-Pose, but it doesn't really matter too much. And then lastly, you've got keyframe reduction. I'm just going to leave that to none. So once we've done that, just go ahead and hit Q download, and it's going to take you into the downloads manager inside of Mixamo. From here, it's going to add it in. It's going to tell you the type, um, the animation, you know, what type it is, so if it's just a character or an animation pack file type, but most importantly, it's got the status of your download. So you saw that it was processing, and a couple seconds later, it changed to download. So if you want to download this ready to put into your engine, hit the big orange download button, and then from there, it's just going to download like any other file inside of, Mix inside of your web browser. So from here, you have got your fully animated character, complete with your FBX for the model itself for the character, and you've also got all the animations. 
And if you wanted to, you could then go and bring those into your game engine, bring them into your project and do whatever you like with it. Like I said at the start of the video, we actually do have a video for importing your character into Unreal Engine 4, setting up all the animations and bringing it to life inside of Unreal Engine 4. But for now, that is pretty much everything for the video guys. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.